Hey, hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to FED Elements. And today I'm going to do two very simple elementary elements for you. I'm going to do a dive loop and an element. Uh, but before I get to that, let me say to Simon, I had promised him that I would do a flying snake dive yet. And I am working on that. You can see right here, I have tried six different versions of that so far. And it's just, uh, that's about the best one I've been able to do so far. Uh, but I'm still not 100% happy with the way it's coming out, so I wanted to go ahead and get something else out uh, And I'll continue to work on that. So that should be coming up sometime soon uh, Just let me perfect it and really get it down to what it looks like on uh, Storm Runner at Hershey Park and then I will go ahead and release that So like I said, we're doing a dive loop and an emblem and these are two very basic uh, Elements that you should have in your wheelhouse if you're going to be doing uh or if you're going to be using FED or if you're making any kind of looping coaster, you're most likely going to eventually end up making these two elements. I just put them back to back like this. So it kind of looks like a bow tie or uh, the element. Uh, this actually reminds me of the element on the arrow coaster at uh, Marineland in Niagara Falls. Uh, and I'm, let me walk you through this real fast because you're going to see these are really simple to make. It's really just about how you position the graphs. There's not much else to it. Uh, we'll start with the dive loop here. So you can see it's just basically uh, going down to a negative. Let me back up a little bit here, just a little bit. So you see we're coming into it about 3.5 or so positive Gs. So you just go down. I only went down to one here just to get the shaping that I wanted. And then you just go back up. And during that time, you rotate it uh, to get it exactly where you want it to be. And that's pretty much it. That's how, how you make a dive loop. It's very simple. And then an Immelman is just about the exact opposite. Uh, as usually happens on a lot of these elements, what you'll see is coming into it, uh, we go down to zero, uh, we hit zero, and at the same time, we've got the maximum amount of rotation going on. Uh, there are different ways you can do Immelman's, actually. Uh, I've seen people start the rotation a little bit higher and have the negatives hard, uh, farther up here. For this particular one, I like the shape that I came up with, so I left it like that. But there are different ways you can do it. You can always fool around with it and move uh, the the uh, rotations back and forth just a little bit to get what you're looking for. Uh, I'm gonna leave it right there because that's where I think it looks the best. <clears throat> so, uh, I will say that the, uh, the one thing I was going for in this dive loop, which is not something that you may be going for in yours, if we take a ride on it, you'll see, let me back up real fast, you'll see that this, this dive loop is very slow and elegant and graceful. And that's what I really like on a dive loop. I really like B&Ms that have these, uh, these soaring elements. Uh, so my dive loop is gonna be, you'll see here, watch it. It was very slow and graceful and it falls down gently. I really like the, the look of that. And the same thing with the Emmelman, you come out of it and rotate gracefully out of it. That's how I like uh, my elements to be, and it's particularly on a ride like this, the one that we've already started with the, the Beyond Vertical Drop, which is 200 and some feet tall. If we go back there just a little bit, obviously it's gonna be much higher and faster than it would be if you did something like uh, a much smaller dive loop that you would find on a B&M, let's say 120 feet or something like that. So the, it will come out somewhat automatically. You can tighten it up and so forth if you're really trying to go for a much more intense feel. You can tighten it up, change the transitions a little so they're not so drawn out as this one is, but that's what I was going for. Uh, you can see here, I used cubic functions on the normal forces and I just used a quartic function for the rotation and just got it around to where I wanted it so it was perfectly level when it was coming out right here. And I did that on both the sides and you see here that we have the dive loop and the implement here as well as the beyond vertical drop so as usual I'll go ahead and upload this file I'll include a link in the description so you can take a look at it if you just want to fool around with it and see how it's done uh, so that's pretty much it for this build. These are two simple elements you'll find once you know how to do them. It's fairly simple to replicate them. And like I said, hopefully the next time I will have the flying snake dive. I've got to continue to work on that for Simon and also for uh, myself because I really want to figure out how to do that. I think I'm going to have to use a... Um, I tried doing it with just forces and I could get the shape, but the, the flow was just not right. So I'm going to have to to do something else here. So we'll see uh, if that's coming up next or uh, another request. We'll see. But for now, that's it. Take care and I will talk to you next time. Enjoy the ride.